so attributes of tokens so many of the attributes of tokens we know and uh, let's see what other are uh, you know we can see here <coughs> attribute values for uh, you know fortran statement here the fortran programming language was there previously uh, nowadays we don't use but uh, i think i had used it uh, some time in my life <coughs> for just for teaching purpose uh, definitely so here you can see one statement e equal to mc square hmm? in for so sequence of uh, pairs if you see id pointer to the symbol table uh, so that you understand right in symbol table where this e is stored so if it is the first row so this red underline thing will be replaced by one so id comma one okay then equal to is there so in the symbol table it is assignment operator will be entered and no need to assign anything right now okay then it is finding aim okay id point up to the symbol table for aim so it is the third row so it is id comma 3 okay id 3 then it is the multiplication operation operator so no need to assign right now you know uh, no need to assign it in symbol table as, as well because it is the operator uh, okay so no new entry is not required for this okay then it is finding another uh, identifier so identifier then uh, you know uh, to which place in the symbol table is stored then it is exponential operator it is Finding here again, no need to assign in the symbol table. Then another, it is finding a number two, so it enters type as number and and the integer value two also put it in the symbol table. Yeah, this is very important to know. Lexical errors. So there is different kind of errors. Uh, Previously, how many kind of errors we have heard about? We have heard about basically two kind of error. One was your compilation error. You have heard about compilation error, and you had heard about runtime error. Correct now in compilation error now i think you are already realizing that compilation error means some error which is detected during the compilation now during compilation means the these seven phases of the uh, compiler so each phase may you know uh, detect different kind of error now there is a first kind of error the which are uh, known as lexical error and lexical errors are de definitely detected by the lexical analyzer okay so it is hard for lexical analyzer to tell without the aid of other components that there is a source code error so, so you know, uh, complex source code errors uh, are quite hard for lexical analyzer to detect but uh, if you see, for instance, if the string if i is encountered for the first time in C program in the context, you know, like this, you know, instead of if somebody have written if i by mistake, okay, the lexical analyzer can tell whether if i is a misspelling, definitely, because it will take if i. And it this FI will match the pattern of identifier and it will be you know, entered into the symbol table as identifier. Okay, so misspelling of the keyword if or an undeclared function or a function identifier. Why it is function identifier? Function identifiers patterns are given like function name. Opening bracket and closing bracket. So it will find function name and opening bracket and closing bracket. So, uh, uh, you know, lexical analyzer will simply say, okay, uh, this is, looks like a function name. 
uh, and it it may even uh, treat it as a you know function identifier and without uh, throwing any error it can continue its work okay but when this thing will go to your uh, parser parser will uh, find it as error okay now since fi is a valid lexem this is what i was telling okay for the token id <coughs> let me identifier the lexical analyzer must return the token id to the parser so lexical analyzer will not detect it as error it will simply uh, you know send as uh, detect it as a lex uh, id and it will send as token to the parser now parser will uh, get the issue as a problem and parser will definitely detect or uh, throw error now let the parser handle an error due to transposition of the letters however suppose the situation arises in which the lexical analyzer is unable to proceed because none of the patterns for tokens matches any prefix of the remaining output <clears throat> okay so in, in this kind of cases lexical analyzer will not be able to process okay now what is the way of error recovery in this kind of situations uh, the error recovery is kind of the simplest recovery strategy is called panic mode recovery okay so what happens in this it deletes the successive uh, characters from the remaining input until lexical analyzer can find a well formed token at the beginning of what the input is left so panic mode uh, recovery is most of the time not a very good option okay so <coughs> if you use panic mode recovery what the lexical analyzer do Uh, from that point from it uh, encountered some error it start deleting the consecutive or you know the next uh, consecutive characters until it finds something uh, reasonable like uh, some uh, lexem uh, what can i say some lexem some proper lexem okay so this recovery technique may confuse the parser okay but in an interactive computing environment it may be quite adequate so if it is an interactive computing and environment like uh, every time it is communicating with the um, coder as well as uh, the parser then it can be proved a uh, little bit uh, you can say ad adequate to do the error recovery in the lexical analysis phase <coughs> other recovery techniques are there which can be used like uh, delete one character from the remaining uh, input instead of you uh, know keep deleting everything <laughs> you allow to delete one character and try you know whether the error is removed or not then insert a missing character into the remaining input replace a character by another character and transpose two adjacent characters like somebody written fi so <laughs> your compiler itself can try to solve it by you know Uh, transpose the character uh, uh, it will become if so it can solve the problem so you can uh, see that uh, some of the recent um, programming ids uh, have this uh, you know little bit uh, small techniques but most of the compilers and ids does not come up with recovery techniques because uh, recovery techniques uh, most of the time will not work properly hmm so it uh, gives you error and uh, let the source go and the coder uh, resolve it now <laughs> terms of for patterns and string so a prefix of string is is any string obtained by removing what is this uh, just a minute obtained by removing zero or more symbol from the end of s like uh, you know ban banana and epsilon are prefix for banana okay i understand this so you have uh, the lexem say banana uh, okay so this banana can have you know this b a n as a prefix 
but you can say even uh, the uh, null character is this prefix. A suffix of string A is, is only the string obtained by removing zero or more symbols from the beginning of S. So understand, uh, <coughs> if you have banana and what is suffix if we say if you you can say this whole string is a suffix assuming that you have uh, considering a null character at the beginning or you can say no b is a character first character i keep it as a you know um, reference point then this uh, a n a n a is going to be your suffix or you can this you know, this reference point you can set then you can you can also say that no b and a together i want to keep as a reference then this n to n a n a are going to be the suffix for this tree <coughs> so that is it is written here n a n a a n a n a and uh, epsilon are suffix for one another understand so a substring is is obtained by deleting any prefix and any suffix from S are look going to be look like this, you know, a substring of banana definitely. So you know, this is a very com uh, simple thing, nothing to say. Uh, okay, so you you have uh, say banana as a string. So any subpart, if you take take okay, any sub part any part then it is going to be called as uh, substring okay but then uh, these are basically for knowing the you uh, know terminologies we are going to use in our further discussion the proper prefix suffix and substrings of a string is are those prefix suffix and substring respectively of is that are not epsilon or not equal to s itself so you know, so, you know the <coughs> prefix uh, the prefix the suffix and substring uh, they are all these three uh, includes uh, the empty symbol as well as the whole string is okay <laughs> so these are not the proper prefix suffix or substring understand they are not proper okay so a subsequence of is that we is a string formed by deleting zero or more or not necessarily kind of consecutive positions of S. So, understand, a subsequence. So, it is not saying a substring. So, it is called subsequence. So, a subsequence can be anything formed by deleting zero or more character necessarily consecutive position of S. So B A N A N A you have if you delete all the N's then will you call the remaining B A A A is a subsequence? No, this is not a subsequence because these two ends have been deleted. Uh, from different places or you can say from the places which are not coming consecutively okay but uh, b a n is a subsequence of banana okay b a a n b a a n okay that means it is deleting um, this n and this no <coughs> zero okay zero or more not necessary okay not necessarily okay so subsequences are uh, uh, this is uh, this is correct subsequence 
Okay, so when we say it is subsequence, uh, this deletions are not necessarily to delete from consecutive location. But if it is a substring, the deletions should be from a from consecutive locations. Okay. Next comes the most interesting thing: uh, regular expressions. So why regular expressions? Say? Regular expressions are used to um, define the pattern, <coughs> the pattern of uh, different lexemes. Yeah. So like the here, like, these regu regular expressions are going to.